Welcome, Changemaker Entrepreneurs. My name is Jared Yellen, and I'm the founder of Sinduit. And it is just my honor to be your guide during this seven week virtual boot camp for change makers, where you're going to learn the fundamentals of marketing for busy entrepreneurs. Now, the topic that we are discussing during this session is an absolute difference maker for you because the reality is there's no one that woke up this morning and said to themselves, I have all the time in the world to pursue my mission. I have just so much free time. I don't even know how I'm going to spend it, but I'm just, I'm just abundantly minded with time. You woke up and probably said the exact opposite. How am I going to get everything done? My mission is so big, it makes me sweat. It drives me crazy. I want to be further along. You woke up and you maybe you have children and a responsibility started the second your foot hit the ground. You woke up and maybe you went to exercise or prepared your food for the day. Maybe you went to your primary job. Maybe you have your secondary job. The reality is, if you're participating in this boot camp, there's two things that I know for, for sure. One, you're a change maker, which means that you see the world for what it is and you've made a declaration that it will be a better place because you're in it. And the second thing that I know for sure is that you are busy. I mean, you are busy, you are stretched, and part of that is because you're a change maker. So your mission is just extraordinary. But during the third week, we're having a discussion, one that's going to somewhat free you up, but not even about freeing you up, it's going to allow you to become more strategic because we will be discussing how to create a network of power partners. Now this is really critical for your business, okay? And the reason that it's critical, and you're gonna see this as we evolve more within this discussion, is because you can't do it alone. I'm not sure if you got that memo or not, but there's just no possibility. You're never going to have the type of change that you desire in the world by yourself. And that's not coming from someone who's a pessimist. All of you are very familiar with me. I'm the eternal optimist. But even more than being an eternal optimist, I'm a realist. And every single one of you have an enormous change that you want to see happen. And I can promise you it's not going to happen by yourself. You need power partners. Now, there's a quote which I'm sure you've heard before. It's a very popular quote, but I want to share it within the context of what we're talking about during this session. Margaret Mead said it best, never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed, that's all who ever have. Never believe that a few caring people can't change the world, for indeed, that's all who ever have. Now, one of the things that excites me most about all of the fundamentals is that regardless of how much money you have in your bank account, regardless of your skill set, regardless of your tenure in your business, regardless of any opportunity or any limitations that you believe you have in your life, regardless of any of that, everyone has an even playing field with the fundamentals. Every single one of you. Like I said uh, earlier today, when I posted the message within your Facebook group, and I said, I don't care if you have $12 in your bank account or $12 million in your bank account. I don't care if you're in a gigantic city with hundreds of thousands or millions of people, or if you're in a tiny little community where there's only hundreds. I don't care about that. What I care about is that you create a network of power partners, because you're that small group that absolutely unequivocally can change the world. But here's the reality, and I want you to recognize this, it's very important. No one has ever been able to achieve sustainable success and impact on their own. It's impossible. One of the biggest challenges that I have seen within the change maker entrepreneurship community is that so many of you are trying to change the world on an island and by yourself. And if that's you right now, you're probably nodding. You're like, you're right, Jared. Like, oh my gosh. Like, I have this huge vision. I have this mission. I know my purpose. I'm clear on it. I'm clear on my motivation and my why. But I feel like I just can't make any progress because I'm on an island by myself trying to change the world. And the reality is you have no chance. No one has ever been able to achieve sustainable success and impact on their own. Never. Not me. Not Richard Branson, not Mark Cuban, not any of the leaders within your network marketing organization, not any of the leaders within your industry. No one 
has ever been able to achieve sustainable success and impact on their own. So what I'm gonna share with you today, and for anyone watching the recording, and I'm hoping many of you go back and watch this recording, is a new premise to live by. It's a new premise to operate by. It's a new belief system. And the belief system is this, and now we're gonna dig into very tactical things that you need to start doing in your business to create this power network. So the new belief system is this, no one is untouchable, no one. So many people believe when they start going down the path of building out their power network that they're not influential enough or they haven't achieved enough success or they feel that they're not worthy enough to connect with the untouchables, the people that just seem too big, the people that just seem too successful, the people that just seem too influential. You spend so much time beating yourself down that you're not worthy enough or significant enough or successful enough for them to even want to talk with you and you convince yourself that that's normal. And I'm here to tell you, and this is from personal experience and I'm going to share stories with you in a moment, no one is untouchable. No one. And every single person that's attending live or watching this recording, you need to recognize this. Right now, in this very moment, you are one relationship away from explosion. Now, explosion's a great thing. This is exactly what you want in your business and your life. Explosion means new levels of success and impact. Explosion means massive amounts of freedom. Explosion means financial wealth, spiritual wealth, health and wellness, total breakthroughs. You are one relationship away from explosion. And think about this, because you're a living example of this already. There was someone, or maybe someones, that entered your life, and because they entered your life, you're now doing what you do. Like, think about that concept, right? Like, if you're a chiropractor, just as like an example, there was a person that influenced your life and that created an explosion. That was one relationship that was that literally allowed you to explode. Because of that relationship, you chose to go to chiropractic college, and now you're a chiropractor changing the health and well-being of your community. Or if you're a network marketing professional, there was someone that introduced you to your products and your services and your opportunity. And that one relationship led to this explosion called you're a change maker and you're here to make a difference. And the reality is this, at any point in time, you don't know when it's gonna be, which is why building a power network is so important. At any point in time, you are one relationship away from explosion. And I mean that, I have seen this happen hundreds of times, where the ordinary John or Jane Doe's of the world, the beautiful people with big hearts and big visions, connected with a power partner. And because of that dynamic, it was just significant. I mean, massive growth, massive success as a result. So there's this premise you're gonna live by. No one is untouchable, and you are one relationship away from explosion. So I wanna get really tactical with you right now. So what you're gonna do as a tactic is every single person that's attending live or those that end up watching this recording, every one of you, you will host every single month at least one webinar or live in-person event or even a Facebook class if that's something that works for your business with a power partner every single month. This is a commitment that I ask of you. Every single month, you will actually incorporate your power partner into your magnetic marketing plan that we spoke about in the previous session. Now, the reason why this is so important because you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that sounds pretty intense. I don't know how I'm gonna go about doing that, but we're gonna talk about that is because you cannot change the world on an island by yourself. There's this whole premise called a synergy, and every one of you are experiencing that right now because you're in our tribe. Think about what we've been able to build together for your industry or for your company. That's because we've created a power network of hundreds or thousands of people within your company or within your industry. The same now applies to your business. When you build out this network, you're then able to plug in these power partners on a monthly basis so that you're never on an island trying to fill your own event or on an island trying to fill your own webinar. 
Now, is this going to be challenging? Yes, as it should be. You raised your hand to be a change maker. That's not for the faint of heart. That's difficult. The world has operated for thousands and thousands of years before you, and what you're experiencing today is the accumulation of those thousands of years. You're not just going to change it on your own. You're going to change it because of the partnerships that you're able to create within your power network. And here's the deal. This is really important. That when you go down this path, and I'm hoping that every one of you do it because it will be a breakthrough in your business, what you're going to create together is the most memorable and valuable experience for every person involved. That means it's memorable and valuable for every attendee of your webinar or live event. Every single one of them says this was memorable and valuable. This is both memorable and valuable for the power partner, the person that you're working with that's part of your power network. They're going to say this was memorable and valuable. When can we do it again? And this is going to be memorable and valuable for you. Because there's nothing that's more exciting, and this is coming from someone that spends their life doing this, than creating synergies. One of the most rewarding elements of Synduit is the fact that so many of you within your company or within your industry are working together. And if we didn't exist, it really wouldn't happen. Because it's not easy. Collaboration isn't easy. Uniting people isn't easy. But you're experiencing it now, and we're modeling it. So what I'm going to share with you to make this very tactical and practical and immediately executable are 14 actions to create relationship capital. Because that's what this is called. When you build out a power network, you're literally building out an investment for your business. Your power network becomes, if not the number one, within the top three most valuable assets that you have within your business. And the first one is your why, it's your story. But I would say a close second is your power network. Because like I said before, no one has ever created sustainable impact on their own. So your power network is just instrumental to your success. And here are the 14 actions. Before I go into the first one, I want you to recognize this. Nothing that I share is based on theory. Like, this is stuff that, that I have done for years, over 10 years, I have done this. Nothing that I share is just me sitting down in a room and trying to think of, like, fancy terminology to train you. I hate that crap. There's so many people out there that just speak out of theory, where they talk about what it means to build either an online business or a real business, or they're running a coaching company, and they've never done anything that would actually justify them leading people. So they're just faking it and they're leading you down a path of theory where maybe it works and maybe it doesn't work. So I'm staying in my lane here. I'm a huge advocate and proponent and an executor when it comes to relationship capital. And I'm going to share real stories with you about how I did this and then what it transpired into. So now let's dig in. The first action to create relationship capital is to, to clearly define your values within a power partner relationship. This is very important for you since you're the initiator of this. You need to determine what do you value in any relationship with a power partner. And a power partner is a person, or it could be even like a business, but businesses are comprised of people, so it's really a person that represents influence. And that influence could very well be on a local level for you, Maybe you're a chiropractor and a power partner might be the mayor or the head of the PTA or maybe it's the superintendent or it could be a teacher or it could be an owner of a yoga studio or if you're a network marketing professional in the health and wellness industry, a power partner for you might be a chiropractor. Maybe it is the head of the athletic department at a school. Maybe it is someone that has a very successful karate dojo or a restaurant or a catering facility. So the whole concept here is there's not one power partner. There's many relationships. And the goal is you build out this asset, which is this list of power partners that you're then going to delve into every quarter to plan out your magnetic marketing plan. And you're going to plug the power partners in to each of the events and webinars, wherever it's appropriate. Before you start actually building this list, 
you must clearly define your values within a power partner relationship. And the reason I say this is because I have seen people commit to this process, but they didn't do step one. And then they just kind of went at it. And they went at it and they started connecting with tons of people in their community or their industry or in the world. And, and, and it was fantastic and exciting, but their values were not in place and they also weren't aligned. And those relationships just fell apart. And I'm speaking from personal experience. I have done this for over 10 years, this whole concept of building out a power network. And for the first few years, I mightily struggled. I mean, I built this ridiculous Rolodex within what I was doing at that time. I mean, extraordinary. And it actually led to more money loss and opportunity loss than it led to abundance. And because my values were not in place and then that was what I used as my criteria, my filtration system before moving forward. So what do you value? Like, do you value reciprocity? Do you value somebody who's really motivated by money? Do you really value somebody that's not motivated by money? Do you value somebody that might not really have influence yet, but they have drive? Do you value somebody who's really not that driven, but they have a ton of influence? There's no right or wrong here. The point is you just need to put on paper what you value within a power partner relationship. This whole premise applies to marriage and dating and love as well. Like think about it, if you were just to kind of randomly go out and try to find a partner without spending time like digging into your values, the odds of success become significantly less. And many people do that and the relationship ends up working and others do it and the relationship's a disaster. And all that I want is for you to be calculated with this, but I don't want you to do this step for like the next six years and then write back to me six years from now and say hey jared i'm ready now for step two like like do this in the next like i don't know day maybe maybe two days at most but clearly define your values within your power partner relationships it's very important for your success i want you to have a foundation to build upon the next step when it comes to building out relationship capital is answer this question. So once you have your list and you're gonna start plugging people in on a monthly basis to your events and also to your webinars, it's very important for you to answer this question before you literally like, make contact with these people, which is what is my desired outcome from blank? Like, what is it? Like, what are you looking to achieve? Because if you're not clear on that, then you're not going to succeed. Like, you can't, like, fuzzy targets don't get hit. So if your goal of a power partner relationship when it comes to your events, your webinars, there's other things that you can do with your power partner. I'm just making this very simple. Every month, one event or webinar, so there's something you can execute on. But if the goal is literally just to create a wonderful educational experience, that's fine. But you need to define it. And if your goal is I want to have three people either become patients of mine or customers of mine, like define the outcome because you're going to want to communicate this with your power partner. And you're also going to want them to answer this question as well so that you're on the same page. The last thing you want to do is spend all this time, energy, effort, money, resources to create a world-class experience with a power partner and then not be on the same page. So when the call to action time comes where you're asking for something, you're kind of like conflicting with each other. It's very important to answer this question from the start. Okay, once you have your values in place and you know your desired outcome, the third thing that you need to do when it comes to building relationship capital is literally begin to make a list. I mean like, I mean, taking out like Excel on your computer and typing, or if you want to handwrite it, you can, but you need to start making your list of power partners. Now, some of them you're going to know really well, and that's where you can start the process, but I don't want you to, to, to limit yourself. I really want you to expand this and even go after people that you don't know, and we'll talk more about that in a bit, but start right now with people that you know influencers within your industry within your community people that have a either a following a drive a platform and start making your list of power partners and i mean build this thing out this is an asset it's not like you're going to work on this one time and then you're done with it i, I have been working on my list for 
12 years now, when I was 20 is when I first started this and my first few years was very unsuccessful. And then I would say probably for the past nine years or so, eight or nine years, it started to really pick up some momentum. And then the past six years since I launched into it, it's just been exceptional for me. And I'll talk more about what I mean by that. But you want to start with who you know and start building out this list. And as you start building out this list, the next step is to then transition to who they know. Like think about that concept transition to who they know. So this is where you're now expanding your power partner network because maybe you know John Doe and maybe John Doe is the owner of a local yoga studio. It's a very successful yoga studio. You can definitely do events and webinars together and John Doe has a list and he has influence and he has knowledge and he's on the same page as you, the same values, wants to change the community and the health for everybody. He's really not motivated by money, but he's motivated by impact and he's going to follow through and reciprocate, et cetera, et cetera. But now it's taking it one step beyond that. Who does John know? Well, wait a second. I remember John telling me that he went for lunch with Bob and Bob's a local natural path. I don't know Bob, but I know John knows Bob. And you start making a list of who the people that you know, who they know. And the reason this is important is because this is gonna spider web out. This is how you really build a powerful network. And it's an opportunity for you to eventually go to John and say, hey John, I remember you talking about Bob being this fantastic naturopath, and you know every month I partner with someone that I consider someone that's in my power network, and I feel like this next month for my event, I mean, this is like the perfect relationship. Do you mind making an introduction and just talking about what it means to be part of this power network and how it's benefited you? Now, John's going to easily do that versus you going to John and saying, who else do you know that should be part of the power network? You just gave like work to John. Like John has to actually like literally sit there and like think about who else he knows. And John's not going to do that. I'm just going to be honest with you. But if you think about the people that John knows and you say, can I have an introduction to this one person? The chances of that introduction happening are almost 100%. So this is why it's your job when you're building out your network to start with who you know and then start transitioning to who they know. And as you start working with more people that fall into the category of you know them, it'll, you'll have conversations. You'll start finding out people that they know, and then you can begin to add to your list. We're also going to talk about what I call Hail Mary communication in a bit. That's where you really think big. But let's just stay here right now. The next thing I want you to start to do is I want you to dominate your local area. So many entrepreneurs are trying to go global in their business. And network marketing is very common. Like you want to build an empire of a team from around the world and multiple countries. And I get it. I mean, that should definitely be part of your aspiration. And there's many chiropractors that they operate the same way, where they want to have multiple offices around many different cities and et cetera. It's like they want to dominate their entire city and beyond and their entire state. And I'm going to tell you right now, you must start locally. You must dominate your backyard. I mean, literally dominate it, own it. If somebody's looking for your product or service, like you are that go-to source. And the reason why they even find out about you is because you build this power network. So now you have people out there that are almost evangelical for your cause because you're evangelical for their cause. They're your ambassadors. And when you can dominate your local area, you become the Tony Robbins of your community. You become the Robin Sharma or the Wayne Dyer of your town. Like, think about that concept, right? If Tony Robbins, the most influential motivational speaker and peak performance coach in history, if he were to have an event in your community, everyone would know about it, right? Like, it would just be like the thing to do. And that's my goal for you. I want you to dominate your backyard. I mean, I want you to think about what that even means to you. I'm gonna dominate my backyard. So if you have like products that you represent in your network marketing, literally your entire local area should be using those products. Like every single person, from the kids if it's healthy for them, to the parents, the sports teams, to the local news station, to the teachers, to the businesses, everybody should be using those products. Dominate your local market. If you're a chiropractor, dominate your local area. Anyone who's looking for health and vitality in an all-natural fashion, they better be going through your 
office. It's a headspace, yet it's something that you can achieve when you build out this power network because now it's not about you doing this on your own anymore, but it's you actually doing this collectively. Number six, this is the one that I really enjoy, and we're actually going to talk more about this later, but reach for the moon. The worst that will happen is you land amongst the stars with Hail Mary communication. Now, Hail Mary communication is something that I'm extremely passionate about because it has worked for me countless times, and I have helped advise and consulted with entrepreneurs over the past decade, and, and actually more than that, and it has been super effective. Hail Mary communication ties into that new premise, which is there are no untouchables. There are no untouchables. Like, you need to realize that. No one is untouchable. Every single person that you feel is untouchable, that's the story that you're telling yourself that you're not worthy enough to connect with them. Here's the reality, and I'm going to be kind of like, like a little bit, uh, I guess, like maybe a little bit bold with this. They go to the bathroom the same way you go to the bathroom. I mean, they have, they have certain likes and dislikes for food the same way you have likes and dislikes for food. I mean, these people are no different than you. So no one is untouchable. This is a psychology that I have just trained myself on for years. If there's anyone ever that I want to connect with, I connect with them. I mean, I've never not been able to connect with somebody that I want, and it's because they're no different than me. I mean, I don't care what they've achieved. I don't care their levels of success and impact. I don't care how big their list is. I don't care what they're doing. All I care about is that I have an idea that I know can serve them. I know it can serve the world. And I know that we need to execute on it together. That's all that I know. So as you're building out your power network, you're going to start with who you know. You're going to transition to who they know. But you're also going to spend some time reaching for the moon. Because the worst that will happen is you land amongst the stars. And that might mean maybe there is a major speaker in your community. And maybe you're a chiropractor, a network marketing professional. And this person has a huge platform. They've written books. In your mind, there's no chance they're going to talk to you because you don't feel worthy enough to talk to someone of that status. And I'm here to tell you they better be on your list and you better be reaching out to them. And I'm going to share how to reach out to them in a bit. But I want to make sure this is like etched in your brain, in your mind, in your soul. No one is untouchable. And part of the strategy to create a power network is to reach for the moon because the worst that will ever happen is you land amongst the stars. Okay, so what we just went through was how to build that list for your powered network. Now what we're going to do is actually use it. And what you're going to do on a quarterly basis, because every single one of you have committed within your magnetic marketing plan that every quarter you're going to build out your marketing plan for the next quarter. So you're always at least a quarter ahead. Now it's time to secure your partner. That's where you're literally plugging people in. So you have your marketing plan. Every month there's a theme or whatever you're looking to achieve. And you want to plug in the right partner from your power network every single month if it's the live event or webinar that you're hosting. Now I hear you already saying this. Well, I don't host live events or webinars. I'm here to tell you start hosting live events and or webinars or Facebook classes every single month. What you're in the business to do is to create an experience for people. You're in the business of changing lives. You're in the business of inspiring action. And there's no more effective way to do that than live events, webinars, or Facebook classes. And I know you're going to say, people are just too busy for that. And I'm here to tell you, people are too busy to waste their time. And if what you're offering is not something that's wasteful, then they're going to attend, which is why building this power network is so valuable because you are far more powerful together than you are apart. In addition, if for whatever reason you're like, I literally can't do events or webinars or Facebook classes, even though you're part of our tribe, so we obviously make it very easy for you, you must at least do a Facebook Live every single month with someone from your power network. But you want to secure that partner. And you don't want to do it like the day before the event. Like you want to have this planned out. But like you're going to be reaching out, like now you're reaching out for your power network to plan August, September, and October. You really want to reach out and say, okay, in, in September, I'm hosting an event called X, Y, and Z, and this is what it's going to consist of. And I love for you to be part of this. Like, let's partner on this. Let's make this huge. Let's dominate the world. Let's dominate our local market. Let's change lives. Are you in? Like secure the partner. And when you have your list, it's easy. You're just going to start plugging people in 
to your magnetic marketing plan. Now, once you secure that part, and that means you're having a conversation with them, you want to communicate the expectations of each party. This is often a step where entrepreneurs struggle. They don't actually communicate their expectations to the other party, and then they feel let down when that other person didn't reciprocate. So as an example for all of you, like one of your expectations is that everybody involved will promote this experience. Like it's not up to you to fill the room. It's up for you together to fill the room. So communicate that expectation. We have done, I mean, the number of launches we've done with, with our power network is ridiculous. I mean, like over time, like hundreds and hundreds, we've done just it alone like by ourselves as we've grown. And this is the first thing that we cover once we secure it. We say, so here are our expectations of you. If you can't meet these expectations, we understand that this just won't be the right partnership. And we tell them we expect that you're going to promote this with the same energy and excitement that we are. Like when we both promote something with the same energy and excitement, it, it is going to be explosive. So you have to communicate your expectations. Other expectations might be, I want to make sure that we have a planning meeting every other week leading up to the experience, a planning phone call. Maybe it's, I want to get together for a one day all in planning session three weeks before the event. I don't know what it is, but you need to think about what you expect of that party and then communicate, speak it to them. From there, since you're part of the tribe, we're actually giving you a huge competitive advantage here. You wanna provide the resources for success. So one of the things you're asking them to commit to is to promote, like I mean, promote with the same energy and exuberance and passion and excitement and focus that you are. And if they're left to their own devices, they have to pull together resources, and write marketing copy and do graphic design. Some will do it, most will not, but the beauty for you is it's all done for you. So go inside of the dashboard, click on the little uh, paperclip icon in my plan and give them some posters and save the date cards and flyers. Give them the Facebook cover photo, give them some of the ads so they can run their own ads on social media. Give them the actual emails we put together for partners to use so that they can begin to promote. Share some of your social media captions with them as well so that they have the ability to do this with ease. Like part of the partnership that you want to make sure that you establish is that you're not going to create like additional and excess redundant responsibility. That's not, you're not even doing that because anyone's doing it for you. So you don't want to give them something that you're not even doing yourself. You want to give them the resources that you have because it makes it a lot easier for them to follow through. So when you build out this power network and you have this list and you start plugging people in and you secure the partner for each of your events or webinars every single month, and then you communicate your expectations, part of what they can expect is you're going to give them resources for their success so they can help promote this very efficiently. From there, you must have at least one meeting for a brainstorm session. Now, this doesn't have to literally be in person because many of you are going to do webinars and maybe you're doing a webinar or somebody in a different state, but you have to get on a Zoom at the very least. And if you can meet in person, I encourage it for 60 minutes or more. And the reason for that, and we're going to talk more about this in the boot camp when I talk about how to successfully host events and webinars is that you're hosting an experience. So this is not like a little, like little diggy event, like three people are going to show up. Like you're hosting an experience. Like if Tony Robbins were to come to your community, I can promise you that him and his team are meeting dozens of times to prepare for that experience. Now I'm not asking you to do that, but I am demanding of you. I am challenging you to spend at least 60 minutes with this power partner or power partners if there's more than one and have a brainstorming session together where you brainstorm every phase of the experience. You brainstorm the, the pre-phase. So that's like the marketing side. What are they doing to build awareness? Do they hang up posters around their place of business? Are they sending out emails? Or are they doing it on social? Like you actually talk about the pre-event or pre -event webinar. You then go into the actual event or webinar. What's going to take place during it? How are we going to greet people? What part do you want to talk about? What part do you want me to talk about? Should we have a Q&A at the end? You want to plan this out. Have the structure in place so there's no guessing so that everybody can achieve success. And then the post-event. How are you following up together? 
Who's saying what? What are the expectations? What are they asking for? What are you asking for? Maybe there's a way we can package this so it's easier for people. You must have a 60-minute brainstorm session to create structure so there is no guessing. Now, I hear many of you right now, like in the back of your mind, you're like, where am I going to find the time to do this? I'm going to tell you right now, make the time. Like, if you want it badly enough, you're going to make the time. I mean, it's one hour. Maybe one day in, in, in that in each month, you sleep one hour or less, and you can then have a brainstorming session. Maybe one day, instead of watching an extra hour of TV, you don't, you have a brainstorming session. Trust me, the synergy and the feeling around that synergy is so wonderful that anything else that you're going to have to compromise won't even compare. But I am adamant about this. Meet for a brainstorm session. Whenever we do like our, our, our partnership launches with, with teams or companies or industries, we have, we have multiple brainstorm sessions. But I mean, we dig into this to ensure that everyone's on track, everyone gets their questions answered, and we're also set up for success for the actual experience. The next thing, number 11, this is a very important one, okay? Make sure you guys remember this. Hands in before go time. And I mean this, whether it's a virtual hands in, or an in-purpose, um, in-person hands-in, you want to have a hands-in to mutual success and impact. You want to have a hands-in to creating freedom. You want to have a hands-in for synergy. The reason this is so important is that it unites you. So if you're doing a Zoom together, like a big webinar together, jump on a Zoom together a few minutes early and literally say, okay, hands-in, what are we saying? One, two, three, success, or whatever you're going to say. Now, we do this at our company every single day for years. We have a hands-in. Each day there's somebody responsible for what we're actually going to say. But the reason this is so important is it's going to unite you. It's almost like a war cry. Like you're all committed to the same outcome, and this is starting that process. So maybe you think it's like quirky and hokey, and I'm telling you it's not. It's an essential ingredient to this. And, of course, you could cut corners. You could do 12 of the 14, and then you're going to get results that represent 12 of the 14. But do this. It's super important. If you have teams that you're on that are working with you along with a power partner, make sure they're part of that so everyone is ready to go. And this is like the starting, like, like the siren going off, the gun shooting, hands in, success impact, let's go and rock the house. Now, after the experience is over, whether it's a webinar or a live event, you want to make sure that you debrief, which means you actually go over what worked, what didn't work, what could we have improved, what were some of the things that surprised us, and the reason you want to debrief, and it can be like 20 to 30 minutes, I recommend doing it literally right when it's done, so if it's an event, like hang out for another 30 minutes if you can, if it's a webinar, jump on another Zoom, if it's a Facebook class, get on the phone or get on a Zoom, and just talk through like what could have been better, and take it seriously, like don't only talk about the highlights, like dissect it a bit, because you want to sharpen the soul, like you want to get better, like Tony Robbins has done thousands and thousands of seminars for millions of people from around the world and every time he does a seminar he has a debriefing experience after with his team what can we improve what was great what are major takeaways what are opportunities for us to get stronger and as a result he just keeps getting better and i'm encouraging you do the same thing i mean debrief every experience and during the debriefing process if it didn't go the way you wanted to the event or webinar no pointing fingers your power partners. You're going to just come back with a vengeance. You're going to come back stronger than ever before, and you're going to do it again, but at least go through that process to figure out where could things have been improved. The next thing, number 13, this is for both of you, but I'm going to encourage you to do it because you're initiating this, is you want to follow up together with intention. So if you get 30, 40, 50, 100, 5,000 people to sign up for your event or your webinar or your Facebook class, follow up with intention. If you promise them certain things, make sure they get those things. If there was some call to action that you package together or independently of each other, either is fine, there's no better or worse, it just depends on your power partner, then make sure that when you follow up, you reference it again so people know they have the opportunity to engage. But you have to follow up from your events and webinars, and if you're doing this with a power partner, follow up together. Like send an email out like from both of you, if that's if that's what you're actually doing but like make sure that it's very concise both of your offers are in there because what you don't want to do since you're the one initiating this is that you don't want to go and, and and have this experience have the power partner promote with the same vigor and excitement that you do and then only you do the follow-up and they don't because then they're going to resent you 
they're going to be like, well, what about me? Like, I, I'm happy that, that we had a, such a successful event, but now you're only following up with what you're offering, and now there's resentment in your relationship. So consider their needs and desires and follow up together with intention. Number 14 is this, very important. You must stay in touch with your power partners and keep on planning. My recommendation, I actually heard this years ago, and it had to do more with like a personal life, but somebody once told me, once you finish your vacation, you have seven days to plan your next vacation. Like that, that's just how they are. So every time, every quarter, or whatever it might be, every, if you're traveling every month, whatever it is, whenever your vacation is finished, within seven days, you have to plan your next one. And this person actually tries to plan their next vacation on their last day of their vacation. That's how serious they are about this because they always want something to look forward to and to be excited about. So that's great. That's how they operate when it comes to vacation. Now, what I'm telling you to do in your business is if this is a really strong power partner, like someone that you really believe in, that you want to obviously keep in touch, always reach out maybe once a month, twice a month, find out if you can do anything to support them, find out what's new in their business, but ultimately plan your next event or webinar. So it's not going to be necessarily every month, but maybe twice a year, you're going to host something big together. Make sure it's on the calendar, written in stone, go into your Simulate dashboard, hit Let's Rock for the campaign so that it's actually in there. Emails are scheduled, social posts are scheduled, registration pages online, flyers are available. You're giving them all these resources for their success so that they have what they need to succeed. But stay in touch and keep planning. So now I'm going to share a few stories with you that are really important because I want you to understand the power of Hail Mary communication because this works. I know so many of you are not going to do this piece. You might do the rest of it where like, you focus on like who you know and you build your power network and maybe some of you will then start thinking about who they know to expand your network, but very few of you are going to reach for the moon because the worst that will happen is you land amongst the stars because you're just too afraid. You're just too afraid. You don't feel worthy enough to reach for the moon. And I'm here to tell you that you have to feel worthy enough. I mean, you're a change maker. You're the real deal. There's no difference between you and Tony Robbins or Robin Sharma or Wayne Dyer. Like, you are the real deal in what you do. So I'm going to give you examples of the power of Hail Mary communication. So the first time that Hail Mary, actually, I can't say the first time because it worked many times up to this point, but one of the most significant times early on in my entrepreneurial life was actually when I was working on Wall Street. There was a six month stint where I said to myself, I was 21 years old, I just wanted to try corporate. Let's see, do I have what it takes? And what it proved was I did not have what it takes. Uh, they wanted me to comb my hair a certain way, dress a certain way, say certain things, and it just, it just could not have sat less for me. Um, but during this time, I actually had my entrepreneur like fire on because I was in corporate America and I remember looking around and I saw people that in my mind, I was on Wall Street, um, were like walking dead people. I know it's like a, a generalization, but there was no one there that I aspired to be. They were either overweight, or they were sick, or they were complaining, or they had bad marriages, like, just on and on and on. It just wasn't the kind of people that inspired me. And what I realized when I was on Wall Street was if they started to live my lifestyle, which was one where health and wellness was at the foundation, it was one where personal development gave me the edge. It was one where I was very intentional with every decision and relationship that I had. If they started to operate that way, their life would greatly improve. So I had this idea. I'm going to create a corporate wellness program because this is a captive audience and I'm going to deliver wellness solutions in corporate America. This is before like this whole like corporate America, corporate wellness like 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 movement was born. This was a very new concept. So I started connecting. I was living in New York City with a few of my friends that were entrepreneurial minded and they were very passionate about health and wellness. And we started putting together this, this structure for a corporate wellness program, and it was really complete and comprehensive. And I actually started pitching it to companies, some small companies, some larger companies, and the feedback was just extraordinary. And during this time, I was reading a book called The New Wellness Revolution, and The New Wellness Revolution is written by a gentleman named Paul Zane Pilzer. And if you don't know who he is, he's a very successful entrepreneur. He's a wellness economist now, but I think when he was 20, he sold his first software company for, for 
nine figures. I mean, like super, super successful entrepreneur. And his book was about how the wellness industry was the next trillion dollar industry. And, and, and the irony is he actually talked about chiropractic in the book and also about network marketing. So two wonderful spaces that we're in. But the book got me so inspired. It wasn't about the money. It was about what would the world look like when the wellness industry was a trillion dollars. Like what would that even look like? So it got me pumped up. And I thought to myself, I want to connect with Paul St. Pilsner. Now, I don't know him. I mean, he just wrote a book, a best-selling book. Like, like there, there's, there's thousands of people that are reading this book. I don't know who he is. But I thought to myself, I have a very compelling message that I want to share with him that I know will benefit him. It will benefit the world. And we're meant to do it together. Those are the things I knew. Those are my criteria. It's going to benefit him. It's going to benefit the world. And we're meant to do it together. So I started to think of every variation of what his email address could possibly be. And I think it was 15 total email addresses, anywhere from 12 to 15 that I, I figured out. So let's just say 15 email addresses. And I wrote this very compelling message. I'm going to share how to write those messages in a moment. And I wrote this email. And I sent the email to the 15 variations of this email address. And within seconds, 14 of them bounced back. But one seemed to have gone through. I didn't know if it went through, but it seemed to have gone through. And then a few hours later, I was actually in the gym for a late night workout. I checked my phone and I get an email from Paul. And he said, first off, I have no idea you figured out my email address, so great job. But second off, I just love what you share. I mean, your vision is on point. I totally see it. You're going to be someone significant in the health and wellness industry. And I wish we could do something together. It's just not the right time for me. He actually just started an HRA at that time, which, is, which has become enormous at this point. Um, this, is, this is like 12 years ago. Um, but let's be in touch. Let's just see. I'm sure our roads will cross. And to me, Hail Mary Communication, that's fine. He's now in my power network. Well, hours after that, I got another email a very successful entrepreneur in the health and wellness industry. And he said to me, I was just forwarded an email from my good friend, Paul Zane Pilzer. I noticed you're in New York City. I have a company based out of New Jersey um, that I founded. I'm not really looking to do anything right now, but if you want to meet, I'm happy to get together for about 15 minutes. To make the long story short, we met, we hit it off. He actually just started a company in the health and wellness industry. I joined him for about a year. We scaled it immensely, and it really got me into this industry, which I'm in right now, which is the health and wellness space. That's the power of Hail Mary communication. Let me give you another real life example because you're no different than me and I'm no different than you. And none of those people that are untouchables are any different than either of us. But a few years ago, when Cindy was more of an agency, I had a conversation with my mom and she said to me, Jared, you need to reach out to Robin Sharma. And Robin Sharma is one of the most wonderful authors of all time. I mean, he is just extraordinary, an amazing speaker, huge platform. I mean, he's at the Tony Robbins level, level of platforms. If you don't know who he, who he is, his first book that became a bestseller was The Monk Who Sold His Red Ferrari. And I said to her, why do you feel this way? So I was very familiar with his work. And she said, he just sounds like you and you sound like him when you guys speak. Just find a way to connect. And I thought to myself, like, maybe, maybe that's a good idea. So once again, I guessed all the variations of his email. And then I wrote him a message because I knew that I could serve him, which will serve the world. And we're meant to do it together. And I wrote this very compelling email. He responded within a few hours. We ended up talking on the phone a few hours after that. I flew out to Toronto 48 hours after that. And then he hired us to actually become his marketing agency for a period of time. And it was a very successful relationship. And my power network was expanded. And I have dozens of other stories like this with myself in it and hundreds of other people. The point is, it's very easy for you to start thinking about who you know. It's very easy because you start building out your network. It's a great place to begin. It's a little bit more difficult to start thinking about who they know, but it's extremely difficult to have the courage to recognize that no one is untouchable. But for the percentage of you who do, I can guarantee you the outcome will be favorable. Now, here is the structure of what I call Hail Mary communication. Okay, there's four questions that you're actually going to answer. And the way to kind of filter this is, are you going to serve them? Will it serve the world? And are you meant to do this together? Now, this is how you structure the communication, whether it's a direct message on Facebook, whether it's an email where you're guessing their email address. This is the structure. Why the untouchable? Like, why are you even reaching out to them in the first place? And it doesn't, it shouldn't be like paragraphs, like one to two sentences. Like, why is this person someone that you feel you can do something significant with? Answer that question. 
From there, the next thing in one to two sentences is how are you going to create value for this person? So it's all about them here. Like you're reaching out to the unknown. They're not expecting you to reach out. How are you going to create value for this person? The next question, what are the benefits that they will gain because of this dynamic? And then finally, don't forget this piece, ask for what you want. So with Robin Sharma as the example, the why with regard to when I reached out to him through email was I said, Robin, you are an exceptional speaker. You're a wonderful human being. You've inspired thousands of people, including myself. And I'm going to create value for you because I know that you have all of these products, these online products that you've created. And I know without a doubt that my agency can represent you. And we can sell more products, which will create more wealth for you, but it will also create an even greater impact. So what I ask of you is 15 minutes of your time where I can introduce myself, ask you a few questions, and then from there see if it's the right fit. I mean, that was the whole email. It was very short, and he responded. This structure just works. Why the untouchable? How are you going to create value for the person? What are the benefits they stand to gain? And then ask for what you want. Now, here's the deal. I know so many of you are going to say, okay, I want to give it a shot, and then you're going to stop at the front door because you don't even have their email address. So you're going to think to yourself, well, I could try to guess at their email address, but if it isn't right, then I'm going to stop, or this is just ridiculous, I don't want to waste my time. So my question is this, like, how badly do you want it? Like, this whole conversation for this session was about building out a power network, and it's going to take time, effort, and it's an investment. It's an asset that's going to accumulate value over time. And it's really hard in those early days when you're building out this asset to like see the vision. Like think about anyone that's on, an, on a journey to get healthy, like day one sucks, right? Like, like day like 17 sucks, maybe even week 17 sucks. Like it's a long journey often, but the question is like how badly do they want it? Like do they want to experience health and vitality or do they want to suffer? And the same holds true in your business. It's a journey, it's not easy. It's going to take time and effort. It's going to take money. It's going to take risk. But if you want it badly enough, there's never going to be an excuse to prevent you from getting it. Ever. It won't happen. So that's my question for you. How badly do you want it? Because if you want it badly enough, you won't just focus on who you know. And you won't just focus on who they know. But you'll also focus on the Hail Marys, the untouchables, who are no longer untouchable. So this concludes week three of our seven-week virtual boot camp for change makers. I hope you found this to be extremely beneficial. I love the opportunity to share this type of information with you because these are fundamentals. These are things that anyone can do in their business, and the outcome is an extraordinary opportunity. And my challenge for you is this. Inside of your Facebook group, whether you watch this live or you're going to watch the recording, inside of your Facebook group, I want you to share your number one takeaway and the number one action you will take based on this experience. And I want you to do it before week four. Because in week four, on the 31st of May, we are going to talk about how to leverage social media the right way. There is so much theory in the world of social media marketing, and I'm going to debunk it. I'm going to share exactly what we have done to build a very loyal tribe that grows on its own at this point month after month. I'm going to share it with you and it's going to benefit you immensely in your business. So I want to thank you so much for your commitment of time. I know that time is your most precious asset and the fact that you're spending 45 to 60 minutes with me every week for seven weeks is not something that I take lightly and that's why I show up here with the intention to move your needle and to move it far. So go and build your power network. Share inside of your Facebook group your number one takeaway and the action that you will take within the next seven days. And remember, together, we achieve more. I'll speak to you soon.